Greetings artists. I'm going to walk you through how to add paint to your loopy fish project. Um, so to be at this stage, you will have had to have drawn all your loops, decorated your fish with patterns and lines, um, and make sure it's traced in Sharpie. That way you can see all your lines really well. For the first part to paint inside your fish, we're going to use watercolors, which look like this. And I'm going to mostly focus on the warm colors, red, orange, and yellow, because my background or water is going to be cool colors, green, blue, and violet. I want to stick mostly to the warm colors so the fish pop when I look at my page. Um, so just a reminder for watercolors, the purpose is the paint is very see-through. You don't want it to be thick. So I'm going to take a small brush with water on it. I'm going to swirl five or six times in the paint. And then I can just start gently pulling my brush across the paper. Now, if I wanted, I could just paint over this whole fish and make the whole fish yellow. Um, I'm going to try and do some intricate, more detailed work on this guy since it has such a small brush. So I'm going to try and paint around his eyes. And then I'm going to paint his flippers a different color. You'll notice I had enough paint and water on my brush that I painted his entire body and I did not have to refill at all. Um, I do need to swish and rinse before I swap colors. I'm going to paint his fins orange. Now one thing that you will notice, since my fish is wet and I'm painting wet paint on his fins, I might have some accidental mixing. So if I make those colors touch, they might kind of start bleeding together. Um, so if I do not want that to happen, if I don't want the colors to blend together, I would need to wait for the yellow body to dry before I painted his fins. I think I like the eyes white, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to switch over to this fish. Now, you'll notice when I just put my paint down on that fish, um, it's hard to see the black lines. That tells me I don't have enough water on my brush. So remember, watercolor paint, I want it to be see-through. So for this fish, I'm going to paint the whole thing orange. So I'm just going to brush right over the top of all my Sharpie lines. I don't need to try and stick inside those shapes because the Sharpie should show through my see-through paint. I'm going to paint his tiny little fins and flippers. There we go. All right. Whoop. Next, I'm going to do an orange fish, or a red fish, I mean. I'm going to do his body red. Again, oops, that paint was a little dark, so I just rinsed my brush and went over it. I'm going to leave some parts on this fish white again. I think I really like his face white. And then I might let this dry for a little bit um, and do some intricate detail work on his body. Okay, now, what are some mistakes that I might have um, when I'm doing this and how do I fix it? So let me, ooh, I'm gonna do some stripes on his little, kind of looks like hair, doesn't it? That's silly. All right, so if I come in to this fish and let's see, if I have water soaking in my paints or I scrub, 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 scrub too many times um, and I get my paint super thick. Remember, we already talked about how to fix that. I rinse my brush and then I can paint across it using just water and thin that paint out. I want my paint to be see-through. Um, if I start to paint and I notice that it is too see-through, I can fix that also. I just swirl just a tiny bit in the paint and get a little, pull a little more paint onto my brush. Um, next, oops. You'll notice as I'm painting that I'm being really super careful and pulling my brush. Um, I'm also holding it like I would hold a pencil. Um, you remember if you've had me before that we don't ever want to hold it like this and we don't ever want to scrub, 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 scrub like that. Um, so you'll notice as I'm scrubbing, his hair is getting super messy. Also, I don't know if you can hear it on the video, but it's making an awful sound because what's happening is this neck part of the brush, the metal piece that holds the bristles to the handle, that's metal and it's sharp right there. It's actually scraping my paper. And then let's see, see if I can see. It's kind of hard to see the brush here, but the brush has little tiny bits of yellow, little specks of yellow. And then you can see little black dots inside his body. I'll hold that up a little higher. That is actually tiny pieces of paper because I scrubbed it so hard that my paper's starting to rip. 
Um, that is my paper telling me, whoa, Mrs. Pross, you've got to stop or I'm going to rip. I will actually rip a hole all the way through my paper. So if that happens to me, if I get a little too excited and I start scrubbing with my brush instead of pulling gently, I need to scrub the brush in the bottom of the bucket, make sure I get all that paint off. Let me see if I can refocus. It got kind of blurry. There we go. Okay. Now, in that spot where the paper was starting to rip, where I see those little spots of paper, that's called pilling. Anywhere I see pilling, I cannot paint there again. I can go in and I can paint around where it's still white, but in the spots where I've got the little black dots, I cannot paint there anymore or it's going to rip. So I just need to move on. Um, also, you'll notice that when I scrubbed in the bottom of the bucket, I got the hair nice and neat again. It's not messy. Uh, I want to be really careful making the hair super messy like that because this metal handle can actually break the bristles of the brush. So one other thing, just a reminder, when I am in between colors, if I need to let my brush take a rest, I want to lay it flat like this instead of leaving it upside down. If I leave it upside down, it can make his hair really messy and it can make that hair break. So lay it flat if it needs to take a rest. Again, today I'm using a small detailed brush with see-through water paints to paint inside each fish and make them nice and colorful. Um, the tips are if I'm using two colors on the same fish, I might wanna let one color dry before I paint the second color. And I'm gonna use that detail brush to try and get inside those shapes. It is absolutely okay to leave some spots white. So once you finish painting um, the entirety of your fish, then you are done for the day. Your project's gonna go on the drying rack We'll clean the paint supplies up and tomorrow we will paint the background. I cannot wait to see those fish. Happy painting.